Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tovo's Q4 presentation. My name is Anna Giranal, responsible for investor relations. Today's presenters are Andreas Torsam, founder and CEO, Cecilia Welt, CEO of IDEA, and Lars Ekelen, CFO. Today's agenda is the quarterly highlights, the business updates, financial results before Andreas will give us an outlook for 2022. Andreas? Thank you very much, uh, Anders. I'm afraid I'm uh, joining you from uh, isolation at home as I uh, contracted COVID uh, during this uh, week. But undeterred, we're uh, we're running this uh, from multiple locations, the team um, in, in Oslo Center and me on the outskirts uh, uh, broadcasting uh, through the Teams app. So um, let me just start by saying that uh, we're rounding off 2021. Uh, our fourth quarter being uh, listed on the Euronext uh, uh, Growth Stock Exchange, and also the fourth quarter where we meet and or exceed uh, the targets uh, set for, for the quarter. Um, so we pause to reflect a little bit on, uh, on uh, that achievement, and then we start looking ahead into a 2022 that we believe will be uh, great for us. In Q4, we had uh, growth in the number of projects sold of 223%. We exit the year at the run rate of more than 8,000 uh, projects per year uh, in units sold. That also means that we enter 2022 with a historic pipeline. 22 uh, looks strong even before it starts. Now, if we're going to look at the highlights of the quarter, the first thing I would want to transmit is that this is a big step up for us in sales, in our ability to build pipeline and uh, our ability to install. In Q4, our uh, sales volumes came in at 2,066 sold projects in Europe. That's up 223% year on year and represents an annual run rate of 8,000 projects per year. The pipeline value that we built is up 7.2 times. That's 620% uh, to uh, uh, generated revenue value of 280 million. That's driven, of course, by strong sales 230 million in uh, sales in Q4. Lots of that towards the end of the uh, quarter. Now, um, we also uh, um, kept installing during the quarter and Q4 is another record installation uh, quarter for us. We did 1,209 installations. Uh, that's uh, almost a doubling from the year before. And we exit the year with an annual run rate of 5,000 projects uh, per year. Now, of course, when you do this, this translates uh, into our financial numbers as well. Uh, this quarter, we have growth in revenue, growth in gross profit, and in the customer value creation. That's the value of each ticket that we have with customers. Revenue generated is up 173% year on year to uh, 109 million uh, kroner. Um, and revenue generated per sold project, ticket per customer, up 22% sequentially from Q3 to Q4 and is now 111,000 kroner and that's driven by increases uh, in all the value drivers pretty much uh, on, on the customer side. Subscriptions, more batteries, larger systems and higher prices uh, for equivalent size of systems. So um, good progress on that. Gross profit generated is up 195% uh, year on year to, uh, to 21.5 uh, million, and uh, that represents a gross profit margin generated of just shy of 20%. The subscription share of booked uh, installations in terms of units was 21% uh, and represented the deployed value in uh, leasing and subscription assets of 18.6 million kroner. We end the year with a cash position of 224 million kroner. That's up 17 million from the end of uh, Q3. In terms of developing the company, um, we uh, have in the last 12 months from December 2020 to December 20, uh, from, uh, to, to December 2021, uh, uh, entered three major markets, Poland, Italy, uh, and Germany, and we will add new countries. Batteries is increasingly a central part of this uh, business uh, and we want to keep strengthening the subscription and leasing uh, 
uh, model so we can uh, grow and expand profits uh, per system uh, the way we've done this quarter. In the quarter, batteries are growing 12% uh, growing and on the group level represented 12% attachment rates on the sole projects in Q4. That's driven mostly by Italy and now also uh, quite to an increasing degree, German numbers where the battery attachment rates uh, are above 60% but also uh, uh, Spain coming along nicely there. Um, we plan to expand the battery offering to more countries in uh, Q1, France, uh, Sweden, Poland, all getting uh, batteries, and batteries also being included in the leasing uh, offering in our countries um, uh, sequentially now. And then of course, a uh, topic that gets a lot of attention is how are we doing in Germany? Well, like I say, Christian Rahn and his team are doing really well um, very fast launch, safer and more uh, according to our playbook than ever uh, before. Germany is our uh, fastest, but also highest sales number uh, in a launch uh, ever. Very optimistic about 2022 and the ability of our German team to deliver. Okay, let's recap a bit what we are because during the quarter we have a lot of new shareholders and we know that the attendance now will probably include uh, people who don't know Otovo as well as all the old timers. So let me just start by saying Otovo is a solar and battery marketplace. Our mission is to put solar panels and batteries in every home in Europe by creating the easiest and most affordable way to go solar. Our method is one where we, on the front side of the marketplace, attract customers. And for homeowners, we're the easiest way to go solar. The way they do that is that they go to their local Otobo site, otobo.no, .se, .es, or .it, for example. They input their address and the software will design the system that is adequate for that exact home. And then comes the beautiful part, is when the software has designed that uh, project based on input from maps and the consumer, we will live auction out that system to installers who have already put in their cost structure uh, for the, the cost of their labor, the cost of uh, their uh, uh, transportation and the cost of their equipment. So we know beforehand what the cost will be. The lowest cost installer gets the project and the customer sees uh, instantly online an order um, that he can uh, book uh, and get the systems delivered uh, a few weeks or months later. On the installer side, uh, we have um, more than 500 installer uh, companies from uh, the north of uh, Scandinavia to the south of Spain um, and Italy. We're, we're present with an installer workforce in seven European countries. And together with them, we install solar panels on roofs uh, all across Europe every uh, single day. If we zoom out a bit from uh, Otovo, um, what we're seeing now is a fantastic micro uh, macro environment uh, for, for solar uh, energy and residential solar and storage in particular. What is driving the growth? Well, in general, hardware prices on distributed energy devices like solar panels and batteries are just uh, prices are coming down. Um, and, and the trend line is around 10% per year. Um, that means that solar uh, gets the lowest cost of uh, energy pretty much anywhere on the world. And our job is to remove the cost that uh, isn't addressed by the lowering of equipment costs in the global manufacturing value chain. In addition, we're seeing high and volatile power prices uh, in Europe. This means that the savings from putting a solar panel on your roof uh, increases and of course it increases the demand from customers to uh, for, for an alternative to traditional expensive volatile grid energy. Then we're seeing a massive shift in terms of electrification and maybe the most noticeable is the degree to which European households now are getting electric uh, vehicles. This means it increases their consumption of electric um, energy and that creates more PV uh, demand, larger installations um, and, and uh, in general uh, drives the adoption of uh, distributed energy technologies. 
And then finally, um, not so much related to energy, but more consumer habits, we're seeing that big ticket purchases um, like a solar panel that cost 10, 15,000 euros are now moving um, online. People trust online players to deliver also the big items in their home, and we're benefiting from that being a digital sales channels for a channel for distributed energy. In the more immediate term, uh, this is um, um, quite noticeable uh, in the extreme uh, price hikes uh, that we've seen during the quarter and that have been driving consumer interest. On the left hand side of this slide, you can see the consumer electricity prices uh, in uh, Europe on December uh, 6, uh, a, a day of high uh, electricity prices, but not very exceptional during uh, uh, the quarter. Of course, when consumers see that type of impact on their energy uh, bills, it drives media attention and it drives consumer interest. And the, what that translates to in business terms is that we have record numbers uh, of low cost interest, uh, interested customers. So we get more customers and the marketing spend associated with getting a customer into the store um, uh, drops. So that's a, a fantastic underpinning of uh, our uh, business dynamics uh, during this uh, fall of 2021. In addition to that, um, we're seeing that the, uh, residential solar in particular is uh, getting um, a lot of good policy uh, support. Uh, during uh, December, we saw just a flurry of positive changes um, uh, around the regulations related to solar energy. The EU uh, Commission has prepared for a 0% value added tax on several goods, including uh, solar panels and their installation for residential uh, use. And that's proposed for uh, later in 2022, would represent a boost allowing um, uh, member countries to, um, to basically have uh, tax-free sales of solar uh, panels. Germany boosts uh, its solar program. Italy has extended its uh, two uh, solar subsidy programs, the super bonus, giving 110% of the investment value back to consumers who get several uh, energy e economics systems installed in their house and the eco bonus giving 50% uh, of the investment back in the form of a tax credit for consumers who get only solar energy. Also Sweden simplifying and detaxing the feed, uh, feed in of uh, energy into the grid, positive movements in uh, all uh, our markets, with the notable exception of, of Poland, where it's a little bit softer. I'll get back to that in a little while. Um, and if you look at the overall uh, picture as described by uh, Solar Power Euro Europe, the trade body for um, solar energy installers and the solar energy business in Europe, their outlook for uh, the politics of solar is almost exclusively sunny. Never seen anything like this. This report came out in December and it says solar energy, it's all set. So fantastic regulatory tailwinds for us. Now let's zoom in on our uh, business. During this quarter, we did fantastic uh, sales. The sales numbers um, uh, st strongly uh, up now at the 8,000 uh, uh, per year uh, run rate, 3.2 uh, times as much as the 640 sales we did in Q4 2020, now 2066 in Europe alone. Then we did 127 sales um, on uh, the Brazilian software uh, driven uh, platform that we um, uh, have in play uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Looking at Europe, sold project up 3.2 times, significant increases in all, uh, uh, pretty much all uh, markets. With, with the strongest sales growth in Scandinavia and, uh, and France. Um, Scandinavia, markets that are very responsive to consumer electricity prices, deregulated markets with lots of the consumers on uh, fixed, um, uh, on, on rather um, variable price uh, schemes. So that means electricity prices go up, demand goes up, results in strong uh, sales in Scandinavia. Uh, Spain also picking up momentum nicely during the uh, quarter, up 20% quarter on quarter. That's roughly 100% yearly uh, equivalent. Um, 
Spain has a subsidy program launched uh, during a Q4 for PV um, and battery being executed uh, in regional governments uh, in Spain. A bit unclear to what degree that drives the, the market because it also means in some regions people are waiting for subsidies to be replenished, etc. Uh, so a bit of a mixed bag, but strong for, for our uh, teams. We're growing sales in Spain. Uh, France, nice progress on projects sold. The, uh, we have uh, a new management team in place in, in France. Um, they're um, you know, super eager to take part in the acceleration in the French residential market that we've seen during uh, 2021 and um, are accelerating really nicely into 2022. In Poland, there's been a bit uh, back and forth on the subsidy and feed-in uh, programs that have existed there. They cleared Senate in November. Um, the uncertainty uh, for consumers in Poland is now lifted. There's a lot of old systems getting installed uh, up until April when the old program runs out um, and then we're in a new environment. So we're thinking Poland could be a bit bumpy, fits and starts, uh, stops and starts in the, in the Polish installation market during uh, Q1, but eventually Poland um, will, will stabilize and we have a, a, a very good outlook for Poland for the last three quarters. Italy continues its progress, progress um, and and uh, has a good uh, battery attachment rate. And then Germany, fast uh, launch, um, 60 sales in the first month of operation. And for us, that means we need to revise upwards the target we had of doing 1,000 sales uh, in, in the first year. That target seems set too low. Now let's double click on, on Germany. We launched Germany on uh, the first week of uh, December. That was only three months after Christian Rahn uh, joined us and he started recruiting his team. Christian is our general manager uh, in uh, Germany and he uh, is a fourth time general manager having done uh, travel, uh, finance and, uh, and transportation uh, platforms before. He knows the platform game. He's recruiting a very strong team and as you can see on the right hand side, this is the fastest time of launch from we recruit the GM till we launch and then he has the sales numbers to back this uh, up very strong into uh, 2022. Now the focus in Germany shifts from getting the marketing and sales in order which is typically how we want to do it. We want to make sure that we uh, are able to capture demand and then in parallel now we're building up the installer capacity to deliver uh, on this. We have a strong pipeline of installers that are coming into the platform. Um, also having signed uh, installer companies a bit all across uh, Germany. That's the focus for, for Q1 to keep building up the capacity to deliver on this uh, in, uh, in Germany. But I have a lot lower shoulders about the Germany launch than I had back in October, November when everything remained to be proven. Well, now we're starting to tick the boxes uh, in, in Germany, feeling very good about that. And then a topic that we um, haven't talked so much about in uh, investor presentations previously, but I know, of course, for those who have Excel sheets that uh, calculate the value of a Tovo for the analysts, the ticket per customer is, of course, of, of big importance, as it is for us as a company, for us as a management, focusing on, on how much we can get into each basket, like all good e-commerce players do. The revenue generated per customer is up 22% sequentially compared to Q3. Um, and the reason for that is that Norwegians are buying much bigger uh, systems than they uh, did before, as are uh, the Spanish and French consumers. Spain and France have typically been the small um, uh, system countries, but they're now catching up with the rest of Europe. I'm very happy to see that. Rather stable for Sweden, Poland, um, and Italy, so the average system size moving upwards nicely. Now, we said in Q3 that Q4 and Q1, and maybe into Q2, we would see price increases on hardware. It's known globally that the um, uh, squeeze in supply chains has caused solar panel modules, uh, so solar modules to increase in price as uh, have shipment costs. But we're able to pass that on to consumers and also consumers are buying more yielding uh, systems. So the consumer price is uh, is up. Um, battery attachment rates up 
in Spain, starting to be a significant contributor to the ticket size in the Spanish market and in Italy also continued progress on the battery attachment uh, rate. And we're, we're seeing batteries now at 12% uh, at attachment rate across the group. And we see that lifting up in all uh, markets. The leasing share is pretty much unchanged, a uh, little bit down um, uh, on, uh, on group uh, level because we've seen more leasing growth in, in Spain and a bit less in other markets and that shifts the value to, to smaller ticket uh, countries. But we're seeing a lot of potential uh, here and I think that's going to be one of the drivers for the ticket size in 2022, getting more leasing. Okay, <clears throat> batteries. I mean, what a transformation from, from last year. Um, nine months ago, I thought that batteries was something uh, that we would do in the future, when the cost would come more down, when the technology would be more ready. But we decided to launch Italy in April with batteries as part of the uh, offering. And man, has that proved to be something that consumers uh, want and that we as a business benefit uh, from. The, uh, the attractiveness of, of batteries is still baffling uh, me. And we are very positive about the uh, outlook for, for the battery market and for our battery sales going forward. We started with batteries in um, Italy in, in April. We launched uh, <clears throat> batteries for consumers in, uh, in September in uh, in Spain. So this is our first quarter of full operation of, of uh, battery sales in, in Spain, um, increasing the rate of adoption of batteries every single month. In Germany, we added uh, batteries um, at launch. And now as we enter this year, batteries are being made available for leasing both in Germany and Spain. That should uh, help the attachment numbers go up even further. Now in Q1, we're launching battery uh, offers in Sweden, France and uh, Poland, and that's uh, also going to contribute to the overall battery attachment rate. Now, the logic for getting batteries is going to be a little bit different uh, from market to market. Some places it's only a backup uh, for a situation where you run out of uh, power. It's only um, a backup source and, and uh, a way um, uh, to make sure your fridge uh, keeps going when there's a blackout. But in other markets, the solar, uh, the use of your solar uh, system can be extended or you can avoid grid tariffs. Um, you can arbitrage from uh, price fluctuations in the markets and these things will influence the degree to which we'll sell a lot of batteries in the market. The high battery penetration markets are expected to be Germany and uh, Italy. Medium adoption rates, Spain, and then lower adoption rates, Poland, France, uh, Sweden, uh, and Norway. As we said, overall now on the group level, 12% of sales in Q4 were with batteries. That number will gradually go up during 2022 and 2023. Um, now I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, Cecilia our uh, CEO of the subscription and leasing business, um, IDEA. And before doing that, I would like to set that a little bit into context. So Otovo has two uh, ways the consumer can buy solar panels from us, can get the solar experience. One is to buy the projects directly. Uh, then it's a one-off sale. Uh, the customer pays up front, we pay the consumer afterwards, and we take a margin on that. We call that direct purchase. It's very straightforward. Then we have the subscription business and the way that works is the consumer pays nothing on day one, but agrees uh, to a contractual relationships that last for 20 years. They get monthly uh, bills that cover both the finance and operation of uh, the system. The solar panel turns into a, um, into a service and we make money uh, both on the buy now pay uh, later element and the servicing uh, margin and these type of customers are three to four times more profitable for a Tovo um, uh, compared to the direct purchase customers. And taking into account that we have about 75% direct purchase and 25% subscription, these two businesses are contributing roughly equally to profits uh, uh, now. And that's something we think we can keep to the developing the subscription side of the business in uh, the year ahead. 
So in December of last year, Otobo acquired a majority stake of Vidia and now holds about 8% of the company. We are joining forces and that sets us up to win. Why? It unlocks shareholder value by removing the previous misalignment of incentives. It also enables Otovo to increase investment in profitable growth of the subscription segment because now Otovo also gets the full value creation of that business. If we look to US peers and, and German peers, it seems that having the asset financing and the origination under the same ownership has become a market best practice and it enables us to access more attractive funding. We're building a European leader in residential solar. By joining forces, we're set up to be the winner. Let's zoom in on the subscription offering. We like to highlight four key elements. Firstly, it's zero money down, meaning customers can get solar panels on their roof without any upfront investment. Secondly, it saves you money from day one. And that means that the monthly subscription is cheaper than electricity would be from the grid in most of our markets. It's convenient, it's worry free. By entering into a subscription contract, you also get the Otovo guarantee for 20 years. So we make sure that it works as intended. And in a, in a world with increasing uh, power price fluctuations, uh, a, a predictable electricity bill is becoming even more attractive. We're building a great subscription business and looking at the features, taking churn first, we practically have no churn. Customers enter into a 20 year subscription contract. Price up, we have annual inflation adjustment included. Upsell, yes, of course, once we have this customer locked in for a 20 year uh, relationship, we're in the pole position for upsell batteries and in the future services, renewables, um, renewals and other hardware. In sum, it's a great subscription business and it generates low risk, high yielding cash flows. The idea transaction increases a Tovo revenue generation because we're adding subscription revenue. It also increases profit generation because the profit potential on the subscription contract is three to four times higher over time than that of a direct purchase. And this increases the Tovo's value per customer. Now we need new metrics to really reflect this increased value. So while we'll continue to report segments for Tovo and IDEA separately, new metrics will be introduced to show the joint total value creation of the Tovo ecosystem. And I'll hand over to Lars now to go through that in more detail. Okay. So uh, looking at the financial results now, there's been two important changes during the quarter on the accounting side. So first of all, we've uh, transitioned to IFRS and then second, we did uh, an acquisition of the majority of shares in Adia in December and that influences the results by uh, consolidation of Adia into the Otuvo group. <clears throat> the consequence of uh, IDEA being consolidated into Otovo is that sales from Otovo to IDEA, which are uh, the subscription and leasing contracts, uh, are eliminated on a consolidated basis. And that accounts for between 20 and 25% of Otovo's sales uh, uh, in total. So when this is eliminated on the top line, we need to uh, show the value from the leasing contracts in a different way. And that's the new metrics that we also presented on the ma uh, market update in December. So on the direct purchase business, which is 75 to 80%, we're still gonna look at revenue and gross profit, which is the revenue less the cost of goods sold. Uh, that is, um, uh, what you will also see going forward in the consolidated accounts uh, for the whole group. Then on the leasing side, uh, as the leasing sales from Otovo are eliminated, we are going to look at the value of the contracts created uh, over 20 years. So 
the equivalent of revenue for the leasing and subscription business is going to be contracted subscription revenue, which is the uh, discounted cash flow from these contracts over 20 years. Then the equivalent of gross profit is going to be gross subscription profit, which is the contracted subscription revenue less the cost of goods sold for these contracts and the present value of operations and maintenance costs over the lifetime of the contracts. Then on the group level, we're going to talk about uh, these two uh, set of metrics blended. So we're going to talk about revenue generated for the for YouTube group and gross profit generated. And then we're also going to uh, use a metric which shows the total balance of leasing contracts uh, at uh, each quarter, and that's the accumulated contract and subscription revenue. I'm now going to go through how this uh, looks this quarter, and then this quarter is a transition where IDEA has been consolidated for uh, 20 days only, so uh, <laughs> there's uh, different um, different uh, uh, ways to look at this uh, this transition quarter and and I'm going to go through that uh, now. So on the first uh, uh, box here, we see Otovo reported as if we had not transitioned to IFRS and the uh, transaction had not taken place. So revenue ended at 103 million, uh, a gross profit of 17.6 million, and we're, we're in, in the higher end of our guiding on the revenue side. Then, due to uh, the IFRS transition and also a change in how we account costs related to the subsidy scheme in Italy, we have a uh, on the Otovo segment that is shown in in note four in our uh, financial report. You see the uh, revenue of 102, uh, which is a reduction because this costs related to the subs subsidy scheme has been moved from operational uh opex to to a reduction in revenue and that also influences the gross profit then in the third box we see the consolidated result for the quarter where idea sales to idea has been eliminated for the 20 days from 8 uh, december where the transaction was completed so that's a small reduction in revenue now but if idea had been uh, consolidated for the whole quarter, we would have had consolidated income statement that looks like the box four, the blue uh, bars in box four. So that's the revenue from direct uh, purchase. And then we have added here the new metrics for the leasing contracts in box four. So this is how we're going to look at revenue and uh, uh, revenue generated and gross profit generated going forward. So on a pro forma basis for this quarter, but going forward, it's going to look like that. We ended at 109 uh, million on the revenue side and 21.7 on the gross profit generated. If we <coughs> compare this with the previous quarters and uh, uh, conscious of this not being 100% equivalent, with the introduction of new metrics, but we end at 109 uh, for the quarter, up from 88 last quarter, up by 173% from uh, fourth quarter 2020. On the gross profit, we're at 21.7, up by 197% since last year. On the EBTA, we are then introducing the same uh, uh, methodology, uh, so the revenue is the revenue generated. Uh, the EBTA is down uh, to 49 million for this quarter uh, compared with 32.8 previous quarter. The change are, is mainly driven by uh, increased cost due to growth. We entered Germany during uh, uh, Q4 and marketing and sales commissions related to the massive increase in sales during this quarter is also uh, influencing the cost side. The income from these sales will come 
then uh, these are installations in the in the subsequent quarters. On the uh, the other item is non-recurring items related to uh, the the transaction on the advisor side, and also certain uh, changes in timing of expense recognition in in connection with the transition to IFRS. On the cash flow. <clears throat> we ended the quarter at the 224 million comfortable cash position. That is uh, um, 43 million down uh, from operating activities, but then the acquisition of IDEA comes in and, and makes a total increase uh, of 17 million from previous quarter. On the subscription business, we have increased our number of uh, total subscribers from uh, 780 to 1056 during this quarter, an increase of 35%. The annual recurring revenue from leasing contracts is up to 6.7 million from 4.5 previous quarter. And then the accumulated contracted subscription revenue is 94 million up from 69 uh, previous quarter. And then finally, um, on our ESG metrics, uh, during the full year of 2021, we have installed 22.5 megawatt peak. The energy yield from these installations are uh, 1,053 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak on average. And uh, this uh, makes the total reduction of CO2 emissions over the lifetime of the uh, installations uh, to 240,000 tons of CO2. I will now hand uh, back the word to Andreas. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Lars. So now let's uh, look at how things uh, are set up for the rest uh, of, of 2022. So uh, in terms of our ability to build a pipeline, it is up 7.2x uh, from the same period uh, last year. We entered 2021 with a pipeline value of 39 uh, million kroner and uh, 805 projects in the pipeline. This uh, year, we're starting with 2,515 projects in the pipeline each of them with higher value and the total pipeline value of 280 uh, million uh, kroner. Um, so uh, very happy to have this uh, pipeline because it represents um, almost the equivalent of our full uh, 2021 uh, revenue uh, locked in for delivery uh, as we start uh, the year. Um, now, as you can see from me broadcasting from home today, there is uncertainty um, on a lot of things in our society. And um, that means that we have less visibility than we usually have on the time of delivery of the pipeline. Global supply chains remain a, a challenge in, in hardware. We've battled that really nicely in Q, uh, Q4, but it would be wrong to say that we uh, know how this is going to go exactly in Q1 uh, and Q2. Omicron is affecting customers, installer workforce, and our workforce, and that creates some friction in the delivery. And uh, of course, uh, as, as usual, since we have a lot of projects in the Scandinavian region, winter seasonality, especially the snow loads in, in March, can shift projects between Q1 and, and Q2. So that means that uh, the exact delivery time of this uh, pipeline is uncertain, but I want to assure everyone that we plan to clear this pipeline in the first half of 2022 um, and in addition be able to install sales that we do um, uh, in this uh, in this period um, so that we will come in at uh, uh, 250 to 350 um, uh, 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 revenue in the first two quarters um, com combined. So looking at 2022, we're seeing an explosive uh, 2022 ahead. We stepped up in 2021 and now we're all set for, for more in this year. We're entering 2022 with a very strong uh, pipeline. Um, we, we expect H1 uh, re revenue generated to be 250 to, to 350, although with limited visibility on the split between the first and the second uh, quarter. 
And this uh, quarter has bolstered our confidence in our ability to scale to new European markets and uh, our ability to grow market share in both new and older uh, markets. Our expectation for 2022 is growing market share in all existing markets, expanding ticket uh, size and the product offering with more leasing and more battery as a share of, um, uh, of our business and uh, um, uh, thus improving value per uh, customer in every single uh, market. And as we promised when we entered Euronext uh, in February last uh, year, uh, we said we would launch uh, two markets after uh, the German entry and we will launch new markets in uh, 2022. Um, so uh, with that said, this is a management that is very excited about uh, 2022 and enters this year full of self-confidence. And with that, we will answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. First question. When do you expect the leasing rate to pick up towards 30%? Um, we uh, expect the um, um, leasing numbers to, to uh, pick up in, in the second half. Now, as you understand, a lot of the first half is already programmed in um, and sort of contains the business methods and, uh, uh, and the offerings that we had prior to the acquisition uh, of IDEA. So we need to work our way through um, previous actions and previous uh, sales, get that stuff installed. Um, and then uh, the, um, the upgraded version of Otobo that contains IDEA will make itself noticed in the second half of the year. Thank you. Next question. Why do you expect only very modest revenue booked on sales sold during first half of 2022, considering that the fact the fact that the pipeline is mid uh, is mid range of the 250 to 350 million NOC guidance? Um, well, as I said, this has um, been been a, um, a start to the year where it's. Uh, um, we're not even being tactical about our uh, uh, guidance. The the visibility on installation times is is quite uh, 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 quite difficult. Uh, as I said um, in, in the previous slide, we plan to add uh, to clear the, the the pipeline, and we plan to add uh, projects sold uh, in 2022 to be delivered in the first half of of 2022. To what extent that happens and uh, um, uh, and how that looks is uh, um, is something we have little uh, visibility on, and, and I think it wouldn't be humble to um, to think that we have um, um, uh, uh, that we have certainty on that. But I'm very optimistic about this, and um, we, we see uh, our installation um, uh, capacity. Um, is is good is increasing um, in, in all the markets and um, um, it's it's really sort of March April May we're seeing a big acceleration and this the shape of that acceleration in deliveries um, is hard to gauge at this uh, this uh, this point but we're very we're very confident in the, um, uh, in the outlook for 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 2022. And I think that whatever doesn't get installed in Q1 flows over uh, over to Q, Q2. And um, uh, certainly we're not putting the brakes on sales. We're going to sell uh, a lot. And I think consumers deserve to have their systems uh, installed within six months. Thank you. Could you give some flavor on the expectations for new market launches in 2022? Well, I, I think um, our, our thinking on uh, market launches uh, was back in 2018 and 19 when we did the first ones, that this was uh, a major uh, event where we were betting the shop and it was uh, something that contained a lot of, uh, a lot of doubt. And now we're seeing that uh, a methodology that we developed can be uh, used in, in markets uh, that from the outside looks slightly different um, uh, we, with great success. The same methods we have in Sweden, uh, Spain, France, work in, um, in Italy and, and, and Germany. Um, 
and, and so the question becomes, where do we go? How many markets do we go to? And what are we looking for there? What we like in markets are markets with a big population, because that means that the, uh, the size of the price we're fighting for is, is bigger. So uh, we obviously want the, the more populous uh, countries in Europe. We like countries where uh, the business case for consumers is good. That could mean lots of sun. It could mean uh, high electricity prices. It could mean uh, that you have a predictable and good uh, program of support. Um, and uh, then we like to have an ecosystem of installers that has high quality. Um, so we have these, uh, and, and then we want uh, it to be a market where we can um, sell leasing and battery uh, projects, uh, uh, preferably. Um, we've said before that we only need about um, uh, 1,500 sales plus minus in a, a geography to break even uh, there. So that means we can sustain in the total business in at least 10 countries in, in Europe. So that's the long list. All countries above 5 million uh, uh, people could sustain in the Tobo. That is, that is profitable. Um, so now our job is to select uh, between those, um, go for go for the the, uh, the best risk re rewards, and then come back to you with news on uh, on how we're doing this. I think we don't want to give anything away to uh, to our competitors, um, uh, but. Uh, we think we'll go in there and steal market share very fast wherever we go. Thank you. Can you say something about the development in SGNA going forward? Yeah, so most of our development will be in the local uh, teams in terms of where we make the investment. Um, we're recruiting uh, teams to recruit uh, installers. Um, uh, that's called account managers. Uh, technical sales staff, customer success um, uh, locally. So um, in general, most of our uh, team expansions happen in uh, the general manager uh, organizations on the ground in, in the different uh, countries where, we're, um, where we've entered recently or we, where we will um, enter. Um, and we've stepped up a bit on, um, on the uh, head office side in order to uh, contain this company that now is at the 8,000 sales uh, run rate and 5,000 installations run rate per, per year. That's a wholly different beast than we were uh, a year ago. But but a lot of the uh, a lot of the step up has been taken now in Q uh, Q4. When can we expect uh, Otobo margin, um, excluding the leasing profits, to reach 20%? Um, I think we can have all old markets selling at those rates uh, very shortly. Um, then the, the country mix and the space of entry is going to mean that the, the mix is going to look different, but it's rational to keep going on new markets. So we see that the old ones can go beyond 20% uh, on, on old reporting. Um, and we have focus. Uh, we have focus on this. Um, we, we, we think the margin will be in the um, yeah, will be affected by the entry in, in Germany uh, in, in Q1 and, and Q2, um, but uh, but we're we're picking up uh, margin points where, wherever we we can, and and the um, the question is just uh, uh, whether it's in the Q3 or Q4 that the, the effect of, of 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 marking up in many countries makes up for the uh, makes up for the new ones. Thank you. Now, question to the CFO. How much of the operational expenses increase was related to the Germany launch and the acquisition? So uh, the Germany launch uh, is uh, twofold. Uh, when that is coming to the accounts now for Q4, it's uh, partly certain non-recurring expenses related to establishment of the company, uh, establishment of legal agreements and assessment of regulatory framework in Germany. But then again, we also have added uh, uh, approximately 15 people in Germany, uh, which is a personnel cost and uh, uh, OPEX related to, to, uh, to the new office that this uh, will be a cost also going forward. 
if we look at that in addition to the uh, non-recurring costs uh, related to the idea transaction that those two together amount to approximately 7 million uh, Norwegian Kron. Thank you very much. That was it. Thank you very much, everyone. Good day.